clearly, um, the Spirit has made it such that as soon as I get a good opportunity, I'm taking my microphone out of my jacket pocket, because um, it's a little stuffy in here, but uh, we tried for open windows instead of air conditioners, because outside it's only like 69 degrees according to weather.com, so <laughs> there you go, and that's the authority. Um, it is a joy to be with you today. Um, uh, as you know, our, our, our patterns have changed a little for the summer. Some of y'all that uh, uh, weren't able to be with us last week, a few reminders. Um, uh, we are still receiving the Pentecost special offering to benefit new churches. You may have noticed the offering plates are where you walked in. That's because no one's going to walk around and pass them in front of you. Um, but you can get up at any time and just pretend you're getting coffee and slip a little something in the plate as you go by and everything. And no, one, no one will notice. We will still dedicate those and uh, pray for them before communion. Um, uh, we made a holy mistake this week. Um, we really intended to sing the old classic, Breathe on me, Breath of God. You remember that? Breathe on me, Breath of God. Well, it got printed wrong, and then it got copied wrong, and then it got printed in your bulletin wrong. And, 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 and we're doing the other song that we put everywhere which means uh, we're going to have to teach it to you. And um, so what we're going to do when that time comes, I'll remind you of this again. But uh, we're going to play through the, without any melody at first. Rick's going to kind of hammer the melody a little bit. And then we're going to sing the first verse together. And then we've added a couple of verses, three to be precise, that aren't even in the book. So we're not going to put those anywhere. You're just uh, going to enjoy those verses. Um, and then the... Now, fifth verse, which is second, if you pull out the Chalice Praise book, um, we'll sing together and the words will be on the screen. Make sense? Good. Perfect. That's what I was going for. Uh, Bob, I think you have a welcome and some announcements for us. You just need to be respectfully to the Spirit. Okay? That's right. Because the Spirit is working overtime on this one. As a community of faith, we are on a journey to joyfully witness to God's all-encompassing love and grace revealed by Christ. We are all God's children, though we may differ in many things that make us unique. We joyously welcome all people to God's table, fellowship, and service as God has welcomed us. When, wherever you are on the journey, we welcome you. Okay, for the announcements this morning, on the back of the little one pager. You may find that uh, coffee hour this morning, my daughters have made some real nice, um, uh, what you make? <laughs> Banana bread. <laughs> 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 and it's not free. I was like, I'm still going to do a prayer. Oh, it's so great. Uh, no birthdays this week. Yay. Nope. Boo. Uh, I should use that uh, to Monday, Monday intercessory prayer. Mm -hmm. If you get the opportunity, please join in. 6 p.m. There's a dial-in number to access it. Uh, then worship next Sunday, and it's Father's Day. Mm -hmm. And lunch bunch. Double whim. Take your father to lunch. Take your father to a lunch bunch. <laughs> and I also should comment. It's great to see Scott and Leah here this morning. But that's all I've got for announcements, I think. Okay. Let's uh, offer a prayer before we jump right into singing, but that will be next. Will you join me in the spirit of prayer? Pour out your spirit, O God, upon all flesh. As we have gathered in your presence, we are eager not only to celebrate that which has happened, but to experience your spirit anew. Pour out your spirit and grant us your vision. Pour out your spirit, revive us again. Pour out your spirit, fill us with your fire. Pour out your spirit that we may return the blessing in praise. We offer our prayers, our praise, and our worship in the name of the one who was and is and is to come. Jesus Christ started. Amen. Amen. We'd invite you to stand. <laughs> <laughs>
seated if you'd like, since this is a new song and we're learning and some of that. So remember, we're going to sing, we're going to play through this first verse, we're going to sing through this first verse, and then we've added some verses that Bill wrote this week that uh, we're going to sing three for you, and then the last one will come back on the screen so you can join us and get the melody in your head. Okay? <laughs>
Thank you. That was a great discussion. Our scripture this morning. Oh, it's prayer time. It's prayer time. You gotta wait. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One of these days, probably around August, we'll learn this. And life will be good, but changing the order of worship, changing the structure of the sanctuary, it, it's left us in adventure mode. Um, this is the time where we share our joys and concerns, and we lift up our prayers, and uh, give thanks to God for our many blessings. Um, I want to start with our, um, as I often do, with our prayer partner churches and ministries, with the prayer list for the Christian Church in Illinois and Wisconsin. Um, this is Pentecost. I know that's news to you. And therefore, we are praying for new church ministries, both within the region and throughout North America. Um, specifically, um, all of these are in Chicago. Uh, Gilead, Bruton Branch, mm -hmm. a new church, and all of those are capital letters because it's an acronym, but I don't remember what it stands for now. Um, but it's a new church. Get it? A new church. Um, and, and then my most favorite creative church name, the South Asian Initiative. <laughs> I, I, I'm confident it's going to get a much more spirit-led name at some point in the future, but for now, we are praying for the, uh, those, those new church starts and thanking God for the blessings of new churches. Um, Becky has left us a, uh, a prayer card and a note rejoicing and giving thanks that Scott and Leah are visiting today. Um, Bob stole her thunder by calling that out earlier, but uh, we rejoice regularly when, uh, when, when family is back with us. Um, and, and then joys um, and continuing prayers for Alice. Um, Alice went home. And that's really good, um, but it's also really challenging because she's still got um, somewhere in the neighborhood of, um, let's see, she said a minimum of six, so let's be honest. Twelve weeks of recovery um, is more likely. And I know Martha is working with the elders and probably all of us to coordinate some meal assistance and some other things um, with Alice because, um, as you know, she lives alone. She doesn't really cook, and uh, but she got that microwave down with her right hand because her primary hand, being left-handed, is the one that's in the sling, of course. Um, so um, she's going to need a little bit of help from her church family, but uh, I know we're all happy to do that. Um, let's see. Also, prayers for um, Shane, who is a friend of Karen and Dan's, for uh, the sale of his house and for health and safety. Um, we continue to lift up prayers for Megan Bug. We're uh, back up to, unfortunately, five tumors and um, starting chemo and radiation soon. And um, we lift up prayers uh, with Dick Anderson and his extended family. Um, his sister, Judy Angelo, passed away on Friday. It was unexpected. And uh, she lives in the uh, Lake Charles area in Louisiana. And so uh, we lift up prayers for um, that extended family as they uh, go through a, uh, a surprise grief process. Um, I don't know if you got the memo. It's Pride Month. <laughs> and, and, and there's been some news around Pride Month. Unfortunately, some bad behavior, and uh, I like to say, fortunately, a whole lot of really good behavior. And um, so I'm going to add to the list a prayer for um, uh, people to be willing to love people just the way God created them. Amen. Um, because I, I know that's what we believe here and hold fast to, and uh, um, yeah, that's, that's my prayer. Enough said. Let's uh, pause for a moment of silent prayer to lift up these and those that have gone unmentioned, and then we will join together for this special prayer. Will you join me now in the spirit of prayer? Great, mighty, and wonderful God who sent us the gift of your Son and renews in us the gift of your Spirit. 
We come before you on this Pentecost Sunday to remember the blessings of the presence of the Spirit. To remember the stories of good news that come in the presence of the Comforter or the Advocate. And we ask your blessings again as we come before you on this day. Pour out your Spirit with power and grace. Pour out your spirit of love and hope on the ministries that are sprouting up throughout Illinois and throughout the country. Uh, we lift up specifically our prayers for Gilead and Rutten Branch, for a new and for the new initiative in the South Asian community. And ask your blessing on the leadership, those who will come, those who will hear the good news and respond through the ministries of these churches and groups. God of grace, we give you thanks for visitors with us, for opportunities for service, and for the good news of healing that we have experienced um, in Alice being able to go home. And we ask your blessings of healing and continued support. We lift up our prayers for, for David as he continues to um, sing strength and, and healing. We lift up our prayers for Alice as she continues to heal. We, we pray for Shane and for his health, his safety, and for the sale of, of his home. And, and for Megan as she takes on yet another round of challenging treatment. God of mercy and grace, we lift up our prayers of comfort and care for uh, Dick's extended family in, uh, in the death of, of Judy and ask your blessings and peace and comfort that may pour out upon those uh, folks that are experiencing their grief. God of love, we offer our prayers for all of our brothers and sisters in you, for all of those who were created so beautifully and perfectly and yet are ostracized and set apart by society. Help them to be able to demonstrate their love for self, for one another, and for you in public ways that help the rest of the community to know your presence, your love, your care, and your concern. God, we believe you create everyone in exactly the way you desire them to be. And it is our duty as followers of your Son to love your creation. God of grace, we offer our prayers for those who experience the trauma of violence yet again. Just this weekend on Friday to Saturday morning, another 30 in our extended community, we ask your blessing. Pour out your spirit upon those that might handle a weapon that you would be able to teach them a more peaceful way, O oh God. Help us, O oh God, to be ones who will love and care for those injured and provide healing and hope that retaliation is not a thought, but only grace. God of love, we do want to be messengers of your grace. So we pray once again that you pour out your spirit, light flames within us, and help us to be your messengers. For we know you have called and claimed us. Help us to use those gifts you have given us and the power of your love to transform the world, for we seek to serve in the name, by the grace, and for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You're up. <laughs> okay. Our scripture today is from a time when Jesus was with his disciples for their last meal together. It's from John 14, verses 8 to 17. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. And Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? 
Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. May God bless the reading and hearing of his word. Give that invitation and have you sing that song. Um, will you pray with me? Gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of your word, for the blessings within, and we ask your help once again. For now we seek to interpret your word. Be with us, guide us, help us, and protect us, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts together will be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So we're going to do something a little unusual today. Notice I picked up my Bible early, which is rather unusual in itself for me. Um, that's because as I was preparing for this week, I discovered a strong desire to do what's called an expository sermon. Who knows what an expository sermon is besides Cheyenne? Um, an expository sermon is a verse-by-verse -verse interpretation of what's going on in the scripture. Um, that's pretty rare for me to want to do that. So uh, uh, things are going to be a little different today. I've warned Barb, so we're going to go back up to the scripture because while I know you all brought your Bibles, it's so much easier if it's just on the screen for you. Um, and as my dear friend Andy says all the time, it's not like you want to dig around in your chairs and pull out um, those Bibles because they're not your Bible. And using somebody else's Bible, Andy's quote, not mine, is a little like borrowing their underwear. You, you want your own. Just trying to get you to bring those Bibles. <laughs> There's important words inside of them. Um, so looking at, picking up um, where we are, and uh, as, as Joy helped me along, we are um, in John's version of the Last Supper, and Jesus is basically giving his go, I'm going away speech. And uh, Philip says to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we'll be satisfied. Now, in and of itself, that verse seems like almost a setup or a throwaway, but I want to spend a couple of minutes on it. Because we do this just like Philip. Being honest with ourselves, wouldn't we like to know definitively who God is and what God is like? Wouldn't, wouldn't we like to recognize her when we got there instead of suddenly worrying and going, wait, is that God? Or as I'm fond of saying just to make junior high students think, when we see that clouded version of what we were told all the way through school was primordial ooze, think about it for a minute, and realize it's embodied and voiced in his God. I'll let you play with that for a little while. It's a hard concept. You'll get there. Um, 
whatever it is. Wouldn't we like to move from believing to knowing? Or put more simply, at least one person in this room is from Missouri. Missouri is the show me state. Dixie knows that one for sure. Wouldn't we prefer to be shown to know without any possibilities of doubts? And that's what Philip is in his innocent humanity asking for. And of course, Jesus rolls his eyes. We don't get stage directions out of our Bible. But you can just hear it in the response. Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still don't know me? I mean, if that's not an eye roller, I don't know what is. Whoever has seen, and, and, and there's probably a little one of those sighs too. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? See, isn't it so much more fun when I interpret it for you? Yeah. How, how, how can you say that when God is fully in me? And I have to tell you, church, this, this verse gave me problems this week. And it gave me problems because I found myself once again going, you know what? Jesus really isn't a Christian. I know, I'm really stirring the pots and we're only two verses in. <laughs> Jesus is fully a God worshiper. Jesus has no self-worship in him. And so this verse, this statement from Jesus that says, how long have you known me and not realized you're seeing God in me is rather a big deal because it's a turning point for Jesus. It's kind of one of the first times he's flat out said, hey people, I am an embodiment of God. Pay attention. <laughs> exactly. Whatever he said, I couldn't even tell here. I wasn't tuned in properly. I should know that Hayden is going to feed me all sorts of good theology, and I need to pay attention. But I was not, I confess. Um, so, I roll, show me the Father. Turn the page, please. There we go. Do you not believe I'm in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. I'm sorry. I got so excited, I forgot. Happy Pentecost! Rick's favorite holiday! Why are you shaking your head? I know, I forgot to say, I said, I said it at the beginning of the service. And, and I'm finally going to reveal to you my three main reasons why, I, why Pentecost is my favorite holiday. You excited? One, perfect, is it almost always falls with good weather. How often can you say that about Christmas and Easter? Right? Two, Nobody but the church recognizes it. Name me a government or principality that celebrates Pentecost and gives you a day off. It doesn't exist. So it is uniquely a Christian holiday, which I like. I really like Martin Luther King Day for the same reason, because it's the only national, or same type of reason, it's the only national holiday given for a minister. So, you know, I think that's pretty cool. But Pentecost is a church-only holiday. Nobody that isn't Christian is celebrating Pentecost or wondering why they got the day off work tomorrow. Because you did. And I like that. And the third thing I really, really love about Pentecost is ultimately... Pentecost is a holiday about celebrating not only the power of God, but the power of God being right with you and behind you and in you. Or put more aggressively for a moment, this is a holiday to remind you, you have power! I practiced that all week to make sure it echoed. Power! power of the Almighty.
That's a big deal. I personally think it's kind of cool. So back to verse 10. Do you not believe I am in the Father and the Father is me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Notice what happened there? He went from words to works. Did you see it in the sentence? Look at it. It's right there on the screen. He goes from words, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. So when Jesus is speaking, God is working. Hmm. Are we letting God work through Jesus speaking? I'm not going to ask you to answer that question. I hope I know the answer, but it's, it's, it's a valuable exercise. Verse 11 says, Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. I've told you this before. I'll tell you this again because it's one of my favorites. St. Augustine has a most famous line, Preach the gospel constantly. If necessary, oh, come on. Anyone? Use, Use words. <laughs> Preach the gospel constantly. If necessary, use words. St. Augustine had figured out that we have a responsibility to live the good news and love the good news into others. Verse 12 says, Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and, in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. Let's let that one sit in for a minute. Oh, it's, it's split on the screen, naturally. Thank you. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works, thanks, Barb, that I do, and, in fact, will do greater works than these. Who here believes in Jesus? <laughs> Cheyenne does. Good job. Do you realize what you just did? You just opened a conduit to God's power to do great things. Oh, I can't do that. That was too much. <laughs> and you're all going to the same place. You're all going, I can't heal people. I can't raise people from the dead. I've never been able to do that. Watch out. Wait for it. Before Jesus did it the first time, he'd never been able to do it either. And Jesus was not a Jesus worshiper. Jesus was a God worshiper because who can really do it? God can do it. I don't know if any of you have ever experienced what I like to call a holy healing. They're not permanent. Right? We are all still mortals. Um, I remember being scared to death the first time I was used as a part of one of those by God. I was supposed to be given an invitation at the very first church. I served right out of sem seminary. I had finished preaching. It was time to give the invitation. And I stood up and said, you know, the bulletin says I'm supposed to be inviting you to make a confession of faith and join the church. But the Spirit is saying to me something different. That there is someone here that needs prayers, that needs a laying on of hands and a healing. And we're going to honor that. I was scared to death already. I figured there was going to be an instant elders meeting because this was a disciples church. And we don't know that happened. But they did. And then the really scary thing happened to me. Sarah can testify to this. She was there. Um, three people came up. Now, I had a strong feeling in my spirit, confessed before the congregation, that God had put on my heart that someone needed healing. 
and he had hands laid on them in prayer. And three people came up saying, it's me. And I prayed for all three of them with all my might, one at a time. It took some time, but I didn't care. You know, let the pot roast burn. This is important. You know, if you had it set, you have it on a timer. Nobody does that anymore. That just completely went over to all. And, and sure enough, one of those three experienced a significant delay in what was a short-term terminal diagnosis. It was amazing. He would walk around telling people, I want to tell you the story of how I was healed. I was like, Jimmy, I'm not sure I want you telling that story because a whole bunch of other people can come up expecting it. And that's not something I feel is really one of my spiritual gifts. But he could not tell the story. And I always, to this day, wonder about the faith and worry about the faith of those other two. Because I don't understand how God makes those choices. None of us do. But those choices get made. <coughs> but that leads us into the next verse. Which I lost track of. There it is. 13. I'm at 13, right? Yes. Okay, good. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Once again, Three people, three desires for healing, three laying on of hand, three requests made in the name of Jesus. And maybe this is my flaw. Y'all check me on this one. Because I remember it vividly. And I remember praying on each one. If it is your will, O oh God, bring healing upon this your faithful one. Now, Maybe that's on me. Maybe if I had taken this verse more seriously, asking in the name of Jesus for all three without regard for God's will, there might have been a different experience. I don't know. I'm no Benny Hinn. Do any of y'all even know who Benny Hinn is? Or is that just a waste of breath? Just as well. Um, <laughs> he, he, he's, he's one of those touring faith healer types. Um, But we ask. We ask because Jesus made the promise. If in my name you ask for anything, I will do it. I think I covered that when I accidentally got out of order. But I, wanted, I, I was anxious to get the next one. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Now, if you had opened your Bible, there would be a little letter beside you will keep. And if you read down at the bottom of the notes... It would say, many versions omit, you will. So we're going to read it both ways. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Or, more in the imperative, if you love me, keep my commandments. Either way, the result is the same. One's just a little more forceful. And we've been through this one. I'm not going to give you the answer. If y'all don't come up with this one, you're all fired. What are Jesus' commandments? There's only two. It's really easy. You should know this by now. Love God and love your neighbor. And then Jesus said, love one another as I've loved you, which we interpret as love your neighbor. Which means without condition. Good. 16. And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another advocate to be with you forever. Finally, the Spirit. Now, you all should be at this point going, hey, wait a minute. He didn't read the story about Peter and the tongues of fire and the conversion and all that stuff. What? Wait, wait, wait. What? Because the holiday is about the Spirit. The Spirit of God. Let's go ahead and read 17 too. The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. You know Him because He abides in you and He will be in you. I am convinced that everyone is born with a very small, tiny, 
mustard seed sized presence of the Holy Spirit inside of them. And it is only through nurturing that spirit that it grows and thrives and continues. And the really cool thing about the spirit is the spirit recognizes the spirit. So when you come to church and you look at all these other people, one of the things your spirit of God peace sees is that spirit of God peace in them. So when my spirit of God peace looks at Dick and sees his spirit of God peace living inside of him, it jumps a little. It gets a little excited. It's like puppies running into their siblings. It's like molecules inside a microwave. Because water molecules inside food, you didn't know you were going to learn about microwaves today, did you? <laughs> water molecules inside food are how microwaves work. The waves go through and they excite the water molecules and they start dancing a little bit and they rub beside each other and when they rub beside each other it creates heat. And that's why microwaves cook from the inside out because the water is heating up all the liquid content inside the food. And so that excitement of the water bouncing against each other creates heat. And folks, your God part is so excited to see other little parts of God right now that it's getting excited and you are finding joy and that joy is not me being stupid and silly. It is the spirit of God. And with the spirit comes power. The power to heal, the power to love, the power to care, the power to feed, the power to transform the world to understand that God doesn't make junk. God makes everyone in the way that glorifies God. Pentecost is a day that celebrates that what God did in Jesus was awesome. But what God did in the Spirit was power. Take the power of God. Claim it. Own it. And use it to love. And through your works, God's will will be known. Amen. Ooh, I'm tired. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm tired. It's all those molecules. It's those molecules. That's what it is. We are... Uh, after the sermon, we, we, we sing a song of invitation. The invitation is to confess your faith in Christ for the first time, if you have not, or to become a part of the body of believers here formally at First Christian Church by placing your membership. We invite you to come and be received in either case if the Spirit is calling upon you as uh, we sing number 249 from the hymnal. I'm going to let him sit because I'm nice like that. Woo! Oh mm -hmm.
our gifts and ask your blessing. Use them to further the mission of your church, both here and throughout the world, that others may know the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, there's an old saying, you are what you eat. At the communion table, that gives us the ability to pause and think, Jesus said, this is my body, this is my blood. That doesn't make you cannibals, but it does give you food for the spirit that is within you. As we come to the table of the Lord, remember that the spirit in you needs food. This is the food of the spirit. This table is open to all who believe, and we welcome you to celebrate communion. Let us prepare so with the singing of our communion song, number 259, Spirit of the Living God. that only you can give. God of love and hope, as we drink this cup, let us share it as your children gathered in love, and then let your spirit remain our constant guide and reminder that your love never fails and that you are always with us. And hear us as we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We come remembering that Jesus, with his disciples, took bread. And when he had given thanks for it, he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks for it, he said, Drink of it, all of you. For this cup represents a new covenant in my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sin. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord until he comes.
other new heaven. In the name of Christ, and by His grace, remember at this table, your sins are forgiven. Now let's prepare for our closing praise song, which is, Sweet, Sweet Spirit, done to a rocking, raucous, ragtime-ish kind of beat. No pressure, Rick. Sand is your Thank you.